Ernie Flexen here for Seconds Out. Delighted to be joined by Nisa Sauerland here at the press conference for Harlem Eubank against Timo Schwarzkopf. I guess first of all, this is big time boxing coming back to Brighton for the first time in many years, especially with Eubank at the top. You were just a kid, but how much do you remember about Chris Eubank Sr. and his pomp? I wasn't, oh, I was 12. Um, as a kid? I mean, I love that era, that whole era, you know? Uh, ben Watson, uh, Eubank, uh, uh, Steve Collins. Uh, I was at the Ben McClellan fight. That's probably one of the, I mean, one of the most tragic, but one of the best fights I've ever seen. First fight I ever saw. Really, yeah? That's pretty impressive. <laughs> What was the first fight? Oh, John Mugabe in uh, Atlantic City, I think, when I was nine. That was clearly a bit older than me. <laughs> no, was, was that 89, I think? No, 88. Okay, yeah. Um, so, yeah, no, we look, we're bringing back the boxing back to Brighton. I think it's, 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 you hear the homecoming story so often in boxing, but this really is a homecoming. It's been a long time coming for Harlem. Um, and I said before, he, he, he needs to now prove he's not just a name. You know, we've got, we've got a few people, you know, you've got like Roberto Duran Jr. floating about. He lives from that name. Yeah, he's not Roberto Duran, uh, Roberto Duran's it. But I think Harlem can prove he's, he's, he's the best in the whole family. But he needs to beat Timo Schwarzkopf on November 10th. We've seen Matru, sorry, not Matrooms, Boxer and Sky are trying to build a thing in Bournemouth around Chris Billum Smith and make that a kind of hotbed in terms of shows. Would you like to see the same for Brighton under Harlem? Yeah, of course. They d they've done really well with Billum Smith out there. Um, uh, I think they're going to do Billum Smith, uh, Coley potentially back there. Um, not 100% watching it, but <laughs> no, I'm joking. I will watch it as a boxing fan. Uh, I look forward to it. Um, I think Akoli can give a bit, a lot more. I don't know what was wrong with him that night. Um, I still think he's 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 not the most attractive star, but I think he, he's still got a lot to give. Um, yeah, we we want to build something similar. 100% seaside town, nice place to come. Uh, it's changed a lot since I was younger, back in my partying days. Um, <laughs> Was that when you were nine as well? That was last year. <laughs> <laughs> Still going. No, no. Um, yeah, when I was nine. Yeah, exactly. Um, no, look, it's, 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 it's a nice place to come. And uh, it beats, uh, beats going to some places, which I'm not going to mention. Don't know many specifically. No. We know uh, Frank Smith's taught us to be careful what we say when we get into specifics. Um, why is... <laughs> Uh, something about builders. Was it? <laughs> That's the most ridiculous thing in the world. Calling him up on that. He's he's like Frank. I kn I've known for so long, and he would never say anything like that. But at the same time, he, he made tea in the matchroom office uh, at the age of 16, and that's how you know he, he came up through boxing. I've seen him progress as, into a CEO. Was it builders tea though? That's the question. It was PG2, <laughs> but it, I think that was taken out of context. And uh, gotta say, like, it was a talk sport who brought it out. It's like, it's constant, isn't it, with them? It's like constant, just clickbait, clickbait, clickbait. And uh, that Simon, Simon Jordan is always like, I mean, I'm, I'm going into something, you know, <laughs> but he, he, he just, because he talks for louder, doesn't mean he makes the most sense. You know, and that, I think that's what people need to steer away from these days. It's like, it's everything's a clickbait. It's like, I get you need to make a living. You need to get a certain am amount of viewers or listeners. But just because you shout and use the odd big word, which you fully don't understand, yeah, does not meet your spe speaking sense. But the problem is people listen to him. Well, moving on from Simon Jordan, I appreciate the candor. Um, what? <laughs> oh, you say that now. What makes um, Timo Schwarzkopf the right opponent for this homecoming show and for this stage of Harlem's career? Well, I mean, full respect for Harlem. You know, he's obviously gone through a lot at the moment um, for taking that fight. Um, he's not an easy fight. Um, I don't. I don't judge people on they haven't been stopped. I I judge on their offensiveness, not their defensiveness. And does it make an exciting fight? Yeah, it does. Does he ca carry some power? Yeah, he does. Uh, ask Anthony Yigit, who, 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 you know, had a proper fight with him. He didn't really... I was with Timo, actually, for the Catterall fight. I brought him to... I think it was in Dubai. And um, I don't, he wasn't well, actually, leading up to that fight. He, uh, he doesn't moan about it because he's not that type of guy. Um, 
but he's, he'll, he's, 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 a, he's a tough operator. And talking about Harlem, but also there's his cousin Chris, who we're led to believe is in negotiations at the moment for the Connor Ben fight. Can you give us an update on that at all? Um, well, no real update. Um, obviously, he's the front runner. Um, front runner. That sounds quite arrogant. Apologies, but there are other options out there as well. Um, you know, we'd love the Canelo fight. G, Triple G, if he's still operating, um, I believe Kel Brook's out for a while. Um, I, uh, I'm trying to think of what else. WBO, not very attractive. You know, I was trying to remember his name a minute ago, Janebek. But it's 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 one for us. Don't get me wrong, it's a good fight. But at this stage of Chris's career, it's about the big fights, and that's what we have to provide. So with that in mind, how much consideration do you take to Eube uh, sorry, not Eubank, Conor Ben's issues with the Boxing Board of Control? Because if they're ironed out and it can happen in the UK, great. If they're not, then it puts you guys in a difficult position in terms of where the fight takes place and under whose jurisdiction. Yeah, I mean, it puts me in a difficult position at home as well. My wife keeps banging on about this. No, it's got to happen in the UK. It's a UK fight. And I actually tend to agree with her. However, if we have to go elsewhere, we have to go elsewhere and do it. Um, but do you have concerns about you know, your position as a board license holder and that sort of stuff if they're not in favour of it happening? I can't do anything about it. I'm operating outside, in the, in, outside of the UK. Fair enough. Um, so that's still the, the front runner, as you say. Is there any chance it seems unlikely that Harlem would appear on that show given how close they could be in proximity? You never know. You never know. Um, I know they like fighting on the same card. Um, you never know how, how, how November 10th will go. It's not, we're not Fury uh, Usyk planning fights ahead of fights. I don't mean that's the best thing. Talking of Fury Usyk, leads neatly into my next question. What did you make of that announcement? I know Eddie Hearn is one of many skeptics out there. He's just the most famous, but I think a lot of people are unsure whether it will actually happen on the dates that are currently planned. What do you think about it? Um, obviously, I'm directly affected by, by this decision because of Hergovic has wait, been ra waiting around for a long time. No matter, matter what anyone thinks, if he deserves the mandatory, doesn't deserve the mandatory, we can all argue about that for ages. <laughs> but he is mandatory. He's been waiting for over a year, more than that maybe, and he's been made to fight to keep his ranking. And now he's not going to get his fight and this is a guy at the prime of his career so you need to to look at the morals of the whole thing as well i know it's boxing morals don't go that well <laughs> together however there should be some humanity involved sometimes the guy's just waiting around yeah you know? he's, he's, he's not earning and he's in his prime he's 30. Uh, he should be in the big fights so what what's he meant to do yeah? they, they're planning a fight ahead of a fight which just makes no sense. I'm not saying Ngannou's going to win. I've seen him sparring. He's, <laughs> he's a strong guy. Yeah? Um, but I think it, the boxing's maybe come to him a bit late in life. If he'd started maybe 20 years ago or 10 years ago, it would be a different story. But how can you plan a fight on October 28th where you, you could get injured uh, hopefully not, obviously. Uh, you could lose. Um, you could decide to do a rem... I, I, I don't know, there's a whole host of things that could go on here. Um, and no one's, no one's sort of shedding any light on that. So it's, 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 it's also a bit unfair for the fans. You know, you're going to do on December 23rd, what, just to, to crowd a potential Eubank Ben date. It's a bit silly. So maybe a, a bit irresponsible, do you think, making the announcement now rather than after the Ngannou fight? 100%, 100%. It doesn't, it doesn't, it, what's, where's the narrative? Oh, he's going to fight him at some point. I, I'm all about narratives in boxing. I think, you know, you should almost have something in place for the next morning. But one fight before, that's not, that doesn't make sense. So where does that leave things? Are you kind of reaching out to the promoters and saying we want some sort of guarantee that this fight takes place or when it happens because of Hergovic's interests? I think it will be something legal. Um, consulting with lawyers, obviously, we don't like going down that road, but sometimes, you know, you need to stand your ground. 
Um, you need to, to support your own fighter. Um, as much as, as a fan, I'd like to see Undisputed. Um, I still don't think it's going to be a great fight. Don't, don't kill me for that, but it's, it's going to be a cagey fight, that. So it's, it's not going to be the war that everyone's imagining. Um, but yeah, we're going you know, to do what we've got to do. Well, I agree, it probably will be a cagey fight. I'm picking Fury. Um, I've made no bones about it. Who are you picking? Fury. Yeah, 100%. Look, people seem to forget that Usyk Bradis was life and death for Usyk. Very Gave good. him his tough, tough, toughest fight. There's no other tough fight that he's had apart from uh, Bradis. Yeah, it was, it was uh, down to the final round, and uh, yeah, it was a cruiserweight fight. So now you're going up and you're fighting a guy who's six foot nine, and who moves like a super featherweight. Um, it's gonna be hard. Talking of Bradis, are we gonna see him in a rematch against Joy Opatayo? Definitely. We're, we're all guns blazing on that. Um, he was there on Saturday. Um, I was with him. Um, he's looking at the belt. That's my belt there. That's my belt. <laughs> Getting really upset about it. I think he's three-time world champ or four-time. I don't know. He's, he's won it that many times. But um, it's going to be a good fight off a tyre. Bradis part two. It was a good fight the first time. Not many people watched that over because it was on in um, Australia. Um, but it was a really good fight. And I um, look forward to the rematch. Great stuff. Nisa, always a pleasure. And uh, best of luck. Brightonian return. Thank you.